Good morning. Uh, exciting, exciting week for us. A tremendous opportunity to go out to East Lansing and, uh, and challenge ourselves against one of the, the better teams in the country, uh, defending Rose Bowl champions. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for Mark D'Antoni and, and what he has done through his career and certainly the success they've had at Michigan State. It's not hard to figure out why they've had the success they've had, number one in the conference in offense, number two in scoring offense, uh, number one in turnover margin, plus 18, and uh, top five in total in rushing defense. So this is a, a good, a really good football team we're going out there to play against. And we're going to have to play good football to be 1-0. Questions? Kyle, you've obviously, obviously had experience with uh, Coach Antonio from the old Big East days. Um, what do you remember about playing his Cincinnati teams? Yeah, always very physical football games. You know, They believe in, the, in a, a very similar style of football that we believe in. Um, there's no doubt that that his signature is on that defense, and and they play really good football. So, if you if you're going to try to be one and zero against one of his football teams, you you really better minimize your own mistakes because they're not going to make a lot of them. To follow that up, D'Antonio in the Big Ten, Edsel from the old Big East in the Big Ten, and then Doug Marone is in the NFL. What's it's obviously very general, but what's made those guys so successful, or and, and including yourself and kind of progressing up the coaching ladder. I don't know. I think for every one of them, it's it's probably it, it's unique. I think everybody in this profession has has got a unique story, and you, know, you work hard at the job you have to have success, and then opportunities generally come your way. Questions? Kyle, your thoughts on the running back rotation? Are you more apt to, to shrink it down to a three or two? Well, right now with Dez's situation, we got to see what his availability will be for the game. So I think I listed him as questionable, but. Um, and we'll work all that out during the week. Uh, there's, I, I think, similar to last week, there's going to be a role for everybody, and then we'll go forward from there. But the first, uh, first priority certainly is going to be to protect the football. Kyle, we kind of grouped them together. Hicks and Martin, freshman running backs, came in. I, I think you even said at one point there wasn't a whole lot of separation between them. Now, are they complementary runners? Do they do similar things? What do you like? How can you separate them in our minds? I think they'll separate themselves with their play, but you know, are they similar runners? I think they, they're both physical running backs um, who showed last week that they have the ability to make you miss. So now, you know, as their body of work grows, I think their personality will come out more. Do you think it helps to have, I guess, whatever position group, but two guys come in together, like two running back, two freshman running backs, learning the plays at the same time that can rely on each other, similar to like, I guess. Barnwell and Chaffee last year as two corners. Or, you know what I mean? To have guys that are going through the process together. It helps when you when you have good people, and when you have good people, they end up building good relationships, and they can be part of each other's support system. That, that's for sure. Uh, but they're competitors. I mean, each one of those guys wants to carry the ball. You know, so you know that, that, that there's a little bit of that too. You have two talented guys in the same class there that are going to be competing for a long time for uh, for carries. Barnwell listed as doubtful. What's the corner position looking like going into this week? Probably the majority of it played by three guys, you know, Glass and Chaffee and, uh, and Dre. I would think they'll take the majority of it. DeLon can always go back there and play for us. He's a, a very smart player. gives us some flexibility. But the majority of it will be those three guys. Kyle, what are your initial thoughts on the Michigan State defense? I mean, they struggled against Ohio State, but just the reputation uh, of what they are able to do on a weekly basis. I'm not. I'm not concerned necessarily about their reputation. Uh, they have good football players. You know that that's. Uh, they play very sound defense. You know they they get aligned in the right spots. They're talented. They're physical. They run well. Uh, they create turnovers, and they've got 12 sacks from the defensive end position. You know so you know, they they do a good job of limiting the run. They get in good position. They get in good situations for third down, and then they have some guys that can go get at the quarterback. So, you know you got to play. You got to play efficient football against them, and then you got to take your shots, and you got to push the ball down the field. They they play quarters coverage, which essentially is man coverage on the outside, and you got to take your shots. Um, just to follow up on that, do you know Narduzzi just from your um, travels through New Jersey? I don't. Uh, with uh, Drew listed as questionable, uh, Andre Patton's a guy who obviously seems like he could step up. Can you just talk about what he's? Then obviously he had a great camp. It's probably a little tough for him how he's kind of stuck with it and is in this position now. Yeah, Andre had a, a really, a really fine football camp for us in the summer, and then had the injury toward the end of training camp. And now with Drew's availability in question, 
Uh, he's going to take a little bit of a bigger role, but so is a guy like Carlton Agadosi, you know, a guy like John Simmons, you know, Janarian Grant. We've got a got a good pool of receivers there, talented guys who can make plays, and um, you know now their their load will just increase a little bit. Kyle, probably a similar question, but other side of the ball, guy who had a good camp, Boggs, and you just said he'll probably be part of the three-man rotation. Where is he at right now? I know he had some injuries and stuff as well. How has he progressed? I thought he came through the game good. You know, I think he's getting better. Uh, made a good play, you know, pass breakup during the game, and you know, Dre's a talented guy. So the, the the more we can, the more he's healthy, the more he's on the field, the better chance he's going to have to get better. To Josh Hicks, how much do you think the lack of film that teams had on him helped him? I don't know that you'd have to ask. You'd have to ask some of the other teams, you know, who were trying to defend him. Well, what's the challenge going forward now? Now that there is film on him, I mean, what what's the next progression in his play that you'd like to see from him? Yeah, when you watch a runner on film, you know, you, generally after a couple of carries, you have an idea of, of how that guy is going to try to make the big run. Some guys try to run through you. Some try, some guys are, are make you miss guys. You know, one of the things that if they can continue to progress that will make Robert and Josh uh, very valuable is that they show the ability to do both on Saturday. Janarian's another guy who kind of hasn't been able to get going in the return game quite as much this year, but he did on Saturday. Do you, did anything change there, or why do you think that was? Hey, he had a big effect on the game. I think that's for sure. I, I think we did a better job blocking for him. Uh, I think that was there's no doubt that that was part of it. Uh, he had some punts that that gave him an opportunity to return them. You know, if there, sometimes when there's a, a really good hang time, you don't get as much of an opportunity to return them. So um, I thought their punter gave us some opportunities, and he took advantage of them. And it's a it's something, again, it's, it's one of those things that's very valuable to us because it changes the game, it changes field position, it changes your drive start. You know, some of the little subtle things that help you win football games, he does. Can you take anything away from playing uh, Nebraska, Ohio State, Wisconsin, some of the upper echelon um, Big Ten teams when you go out to play, you know, another top level, top level team? Can you take anything away from the, that? I think as a program, we learned a lot in that three-game stretch, and now we have an opportunity to apply it. You know, not all those things we want to talk about publicly, but you know, every time you play, one and zero or not, you're evaluating what you did, what you did well, what you didn't, and, and trying to do the things you didn't do well better, and trying to build on the things that you did. So, you know, I think though the experience of those three games, there's no doubt, will help us going forward into this week. Kyle, two Big Ten backs uh, this weekend combined for more than 700 rushing yards, and then you have two more that are in the top ten. What do you think that's an overall function of? Talented running backs in this conference, coaches that are committed to running the football. You know, some of the things I talked about before the season, uh, there's no doubt in this conference there's a commitment to running the football, there's a commitment to physical football. And um, when you do that and you have some talented players, those kind of things can happen. Uh, <clears throat> switching it up to receivers, Tony Lippett, what do you see from him on film and how does he compare to some of the other, you know, top receivers you guys have faced? Yeah, he does an excellent job making plays. I think he's averaging just under 20 yards a catch or close to 20 yards a catch. And the receiver on the other side as well, number 25, I believe he's averaging about 20 yards a catch as well. So, you know, they, they've got a good quarterback, a talented guy. They're committed to running the ball. They run the ball effectively. And, and when you do that, they force the eighth guy into the box and, and create the one-on-ones that allow him to, to go make some big plays. And, and they do a good job of calling the plays for him to push the ball down the field. You mentioned their quarterback. I don't know if, I don't know how much you looked at Michigan State before this season and the off season or whatnot, but has he come a long way? Because he was kind of considered a game manager uh, on that Rose Bowl team. And now obviously he's got pretty good numbers. I think some of those things started last year. I don't know if, if people would have referred to him like that in the Big Ten Championship game last year. He had a pretty good game. Um, but no, I, I think he's certainly progressed. You know, the experience going through last year, and not just the not just the knowledge of the offense, but the confidence you gain with success, has uh, has carried over to this year. I think maybe over the summer you said Iowa was a program you might look at as you know something of a model. Is Michigan State kind of fit into that mold a little bit too? Some things that they've been able to do. Do you think they could work here? Yeah, well, I, I I admire Coach D'Antoni and, and what he's done and, and how he's he's taken that program to the next level. I think 
those are probably two good uh, two good examples of programs that have, have found a way to get the right people into their program they have they have philosophically they know who they want to be and they're consistent with it and it, over time it is it has succeeded for them thank you